Hey everyone, welcome to this video. This one's gonna be a fun one, it's gonna be educational, and it's all about using the intersect mode within the new Lightroom masking tools that were announced last week at Adobe Max. Now, uh, this was a topic that several people have asked about in the comments below, so thank you for that. And so if there's something that doesn't make sense, I wanna know about it, and if I can, I'll put a video together. So uh, you guys wanted to know about intersect? we're gonna make a video here about it. And it's important because this is actually a pretty powerful tool, but it's not necessarily very easy to understand. And more importantly, if you are a Lightroom Classic user, you'll see this intersect option in the masking tool. But let's say you are using the newer version of Lightroom or you're using Lightroom Mobile, like on iOS, for example. The word intersect does not appear anywhere, but it's still there. So we're gonna show you uh, how to use Intersect in Lightroom Classic. This, then we're gonna move over to the new Lightroom and then we're gonna also go on to Lightroom iOS. Now to explain what Intersect is in relation to masking, the way that I approach it is masking, the first thing that you do with masking is you make your selection and that is the where. So where in your image do you want to make a localized adjustment? What Intersect allows you to do is further refine that by selecting what. So you have where, so where in the image, and then what, like is there a specific part of that selection you just made that you want to target even more? And it's very powerful. So I selected a few images here. Let's jump over to the desktop and I've got these two images and I think they'll do a good job of illustrating um, how to use Intersect. And again, we also have uh, the newer version of Lightroom with the same images. And then I also have on my phone uh, these images here as well. So we're gonna work on the exact same photos and I'm gonna walk you through how to uh, achieve the same results. And again, the reason why I'm doing that is because on Lightroom Classic, you have this thing here, you'll see uh, if we go into this photo and we go to develop module and then in masking, um, you'll see, I'll just select this mask that I have created. Um, if I go to the little ellipse, there's this intersect mask width. However, if we go to uh, the new Lightroom, for example, and we go to masking, and I'm just gonna go ahead and select subject really quickly, um, you'll see that there is no intersect option. It just doesn't exist in this version of Lightroom. So, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it. Actually, the functionality is fully there. It's just how you think about it. So let's go ahead here. I'm gonna keep these masks here um, because as you can see, I'll just show you that um, we'll start with this image. Um, these masks were uh, applied before this new version of the Lightroom came out. So the nice thing about uh, the update is that it actually preserves any of the local adjustments or the local selections you've made. And so like I mentioned, the first thing we wanna do with masking is select where we wanna mask. So I'm gonna go ahead here and create a new mask I'm gonna click on select subject. So this is me. Um, this was a photo I took of myself on Abraham Lake in Canada a few years ago. And what I wanna do in this photo is I want to change the color of my jacket. So the way to do that is this, like it used to be that, let's delete that mask really quickly here. Um, if I wanted to do that, I can either use, say, uh, a brush, or I can even uh, use the color range selection. But here's the problem with that. If I click on color range and I click on my jacket, you notice here how the that color uh, is selected throughout the entire image, which means that I would have to go ahead and either use a combination of other erase tools to get rid of everything. That's no longer the case here because we now have select subject and select sky. So let's walk you through this. Let me delete this here. And just like before, I'm gonna go create a new mask and I'm gonna select subject, which is uh, me. And like I showed you in the previous video, I'm gonna rename it just to make it easier to understand what I'm working on. So I'm gonna call this uh, Brian mask and I'll click okay. So now I know that that's mine. And Again, so we did the where. We use the select subject to select where, but where is me, the confines of me. But I still want to refine that further by only selecting my jacket. So the way to do that is using the intersect tool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this mask and I'm gonna click on this little ellipse here and I'm gonna go to intersect with, 
And now you can choose what type of masking tool you want to use to refine or select what you want to mask. So I'm going to go and select color range just like before. And let's hide the overlay. And I'm just going to click right here. And so you can see that it only selects my jacket. Whereas before when we did the color range uh, filter, it selected the color throughout the whole image. But now it's restricted to that what, which was the subject. It's restricted to me. I can go ahead with this refine slider. And if I press and hold on the option key or alt key on the Mac and click, you can see that I can refine. Now, one thing to note, you see here on the mask, it's actually showing the rest of the image, parts of it being selected. Don't worry about that. Um, the only thing that's going to be working here during our masking process will be the subject. So I'm going to go ahead and really refine it just so that the jacket is glowing. And so that I know is now my selection. And so now I can go ahead and turn the overlay off and I can have some fun. So just to show you, you see how only the jacket is being edited here. So I can open up the brightness a little bit. I can open up the shadows just a little bit. But what's more fun is I can just change the color of the jacket altogether. So I can take this hue slider and I can make it say like a yellowish green, which is really cool. So again, it's really powerful and we'll take it a step further here. So let's say my gaiters, I want to change the color of those as well. Well, I can go ahead and uh, create a new mask and I'll select subject again. And so I'll go ahead right here. I'll rename this one to uh, Gators Mask. Click OK. And actually, I'm going to go back to the Brian Mask and I'm going to rename that one to Jacket Mask because I actually am not masking my the entire subject. I'm just masking the jacket. So I know now that these are the two uh, specific selections. So we'll go here to the Gator Mask. And just like before, let's turn uh, the overlay off. I'm going to go to Intersect With and I'm going to select Color Range and then I'm gonna click here. Now, the reason why um, here we have multiple selections is because within the selection of me, within the select subject uh, and the color range intersection, the gaiters are selected as well as my little uh, spiked feet here that I have on. And so what I wanna do is remove those. So I'm gonna take it a step further and I'm gonna to go to subtract. I'm gonna to go to brush and I'll just erase that. So when I make my edits, it's only affecting the gaiters. It's not affecting uh, the little rubber spiked feet. So now with that done, I can turn the overlay off. And again, just like before, I can make them brighter. I can turn them say like blue or purple, which is kind of fun. And we have made this wholesale change. And again, because we're using a combination of the select subject, which is what we want to mask, and then we're using the intersect option, which is where we want to mask, we can get super refined with what we want to edit. So it's, it's very cool. And so just like that, we were able to make two very, very complex changes, but with relative ease. If I wasn't walking through this process, I can have it done in a few seconds. And so the nice thing is we can always come back to this. If say, for example, uh, you don't want that color, you can just come back to this specific mask here and, you know, change it to something else. Uh, you know, you can have it match the, the jacket if you want, but that's kind of what intersect is all about. It's using a combination of the selection with another selection or masking tool to further refine what you want to adjust locally. So let's go to another image over here. Go to the grid view and we'll go to this photo here taken in Cuba. So this is the same basic principle except I'm going to use a different uh, intersect tool. So we'll go to develop here. Now in this one what I want to do is I want to kind of open up the shadows on the bottom part of this car. So the way that I'll do that is I'll go to the masking panel again and I'll select subject. And again, just if you need any proof of how amazing the AI based select subject and select sky are this constant, I'm constantly just amazed at this. And so again, I said, I want to just adjust the bottom of it. And so because we've selected what, which is the subject or the car, we'll rename this to uh, car mask. I'm going to go ahead and 
click on the ellipse and go to intersect mask with linear gradient. And watch what happens now. If I click from down here and go up, see how we're only building from the bottom within the subject. We're not building it from nothing below the car is being selected. And so I can, you know, move this around and it's only, it's basically confining itself to the subject, which again, makes it really powerful. And so now I can go ahead and turn this overlay off and I can open up the shadows. I can make it brighter. And it's just a little bit, it's not that much, but it makes it a little bit easier to see the bottom here. And you can see if we toggle that mask, I'll hide the selection there. And you can see we're able to bring out some more of that detail. And so that's basically how you can use Intersect with a variety of different tools. Again, the first thing you're gonna do is select what, and then if you're gonna use the Intersect mode, you're gonna select where. All right, now let's move on to the newer version of Lightroom Lightroom Desktop. And I mentioned again, Classic, as we just saw, has Intersect, but the new Lightroom doesn't. And that's not a problem because you can achieve the exact same functionality of the Intersect tool in Classic in the new Lightroom on your desktop as well as on mobile, and I'll show you how. So we'll go to that photo here of the car in Cuba, and we're gonna repeat the same exact process. We'll go to the mask option here, I'll click on select subject, and it selects the car, as you can see here. Now, Intersect in Classic is a combination of two functions. The first is this subtract button, followed by invert. That's what intersect is, subtract plus invert. So again, I mentioned that I want to only apply the, uh, the adjustment to the bottom part of the car. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to subtract and just like before, we're gonna select on linear gradient and I'm gonna drag up from here. And basically I'm gonna make it so that only that bottom part is technically now deselected or unselected in the mask. And then I'm gonna click on invert and voila. Now you have the exact same selection that we had in classic using intersect. Again, intersect is just subtract plus invert. And so I can go ahead and turn this overlay off and we can do the same thing. We can make it a little bit brighter and we can make it uh, open up the shadows a little bit more. And you can see here, let's rename this to uh, car mask. Um, if we turn that on and off, we can hide that display there. And you can see here exactly what we did, just like in Lightroom Classic. It's the exact same thing, exact same thing. Just because the new Lightroom desktop doesn't have the menu item for Intersect doesn't mean that you don't have that functionality. It's just a slightly different way to approach it where you first select what you want it to mask. So in this case, it was select subject. And then we used the subtract plus invert. And that gives you the exact same results as intersect. And so now the last thing we're going to do is go to the iPhone. So I've got my iPhone here. Um, and what I want to do is the exact same thing. I'm going to go ahead here and go to the masking tool. So that's at the top. And I'll, I might as well show you just how, uh, at least on iOS, how masking works. So you see the blue uh, plus button on the bottom right. If you drag to the left, it actually expands it. So it gives you a little bit more information if you want. It. And so what I'm going to do here is click this and create create new mask. And just like before, we're going to click select subject. And then we'll click on the ellipse on the mask and we will rename that to, uh, we'll just call that car mask, just like before. So car mask. Cool. Now, again, if you want to intersect this with another selection to refine where you want to mask, you're going to click on subtract from car mask and we're going to go to linear gradient and let's hide this for a second here and we will drag up and let's move that right around there. Now, the invert button is actually on the left. You can see if we swipe from the, on the right here, um, there is no invert button. However, on the left here, if you swipe out, you'll see that there's invert and delete. So I'm gonna click on invert. And just like Lightroom Classic and just like Lightroom Desktop, we get the exact same selection. And so now I can go ahead to the, uh, the light controls here, the luminance controls, and I can open up the exposure just a little bit. And I can open up shadows just a little bit. 
and then we can uh, go back to the mask here. And if you want, we can turn that off so we can hide it. And we can turn it back on so you can see it again. And then when you're done, you just click on the checkbox and there you go. And so again, Intersect is available on all of the versions of Lightroom. It's just uh, that on Lightroom Classic, it's actually called Intersect. And then in on Lightroom Desktop and on mobile, it's a combination of subtract plus invert. All right, so that's how to use Intersect. And I know I went pretty deep on multiple platforms. That's because not everyone uses Lightroom Classic. Some people use the newer Lightroom. Some people are pretty much only on Lightroom on iOS, whether it's on their iPad or on their iPhones or on Android. And I think it's important to know that just because the menu item intersect doesn't appear, that does not mean that you don't have that functionality. So I hope that you now have a better idea of what intersect is in relation to masking. Again, the first thing you're gonna do with the masking tool is select what. So you can either select, you know, using the select subject, select sky, or even a brush or one of the other filters. But then you can use either the intersect or the subtract plus invert to select where. And so it allows you to further refine specifically what you want to uh, adjust locally. And it's very, very powerful. It's like one of the most fun things I've been doing lately since uh, I really started to understand just how powerful these tools were. Uh, I actually enjoy doing these localized edits. I find that's really where you can refine the look of your photo, really get it to, to exactly where you want it to be, as opposed to just using a bunch of global adjustments. So again, I hope uh, you found this helpful. And one last thing that I wanna bring up has to do with who's watching my videos. So for the year thus far in 2021, only about 13% of anyone who's watched my videos has actually been subscribed. So the rest of uh, the people who've watched my videos are finding it just through either searching or through YouTube. And so what I'd love to do is ask you to subscribe to the channel. I'm investing a lot more into the channel. I'm gonna be providing a lot more videos. And so if you like what you see, one, feel free to hit that thumbs up, but I would love it if you click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified for all of my new videos. And if you haven't checked out my Lightroom masking video that walks through the general functionality of these new tools, definitely check that out. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks a lot, everyone.